Okay, how we doing, everybody? All right, let's talk a little bit about where Ballet Conrad is going. Okay, aside from the art and all that. Um, so here's the statement I'm gonna make, an empirical statement. So ballet, as it turns out, is the fundamental science of human movement. Right? How do I know that? Well, because our movement in, in almost every area of life that I can think of, even in the water, even if you're skydiving to some extent, is initiated with your hips, right? Our hips are our primary point of initiating movement and then supported in one way or another by the rest. So my plans for developing this on the pedagogical side goes well beyond um, the art of ballet, right? And so we're, we're beginning that now. We have people all over the world, all different ages and all different circumstances already using our new classes even, right? Which is, which is awesome. I'm glad, I'm really, really happy that that's, that's turning out that way. So, um, I mean, really, every human being in the world should just begin their day and maybe end their day with just a fundamental bar. Aside from the fact that it comes from ballet, I mean just for health. Uh, starting from childhood and then just for the rest of your life, just, as a, just maintain yourself all the way through your life. Because obviously, uh, many of you already know this, is I started training Svetlana just to deal with her. She had, had chronic migraines since adolescence, you see and then immigrated here, all of that, went to all the specialists, neurologists, and it just ends up being about, you know, medications and stuff like that. So, the, you know, the only solution it turned out to be was doing a fundamental bar, just four or five exercises for consistently for some period of time, and, and that's that. You, you see the results. But it began just to try to get a handle on her migraines, and after a year of training, they were gone. They were gone. So it's, it's really not even a long-term commitment it's it's right now you get the I mean it is a bit of a long-term commitment to maintain yourself you have to maintain yourself but that's much easier than the initial establishing of placement right to, to heal your body maintaining it is not that big of a deal actually so that's how I see this just on a pedagogical level on a human level but here's what I also think about So I've read the book of Scott Kelly. He's one of our great astronauts, and he has a brother, twin brother, Mark Kelly. And uh, Scott Kelly went to spend about a year in space on the space station, and then they compare. They're comparing. I mean, I think this is going to, going to go on for some time. But they made like initial comparison of the effect that that long-term exposure to zero G and whatever had an effect on one brother versus the other brother, and the effect on his body was like just his immune response was fairly extraordinary, like really, really difficult for him, which is really difficult in a, in a variety of ways because we're, we're not evolved to be in zero G and so our immune system apparently, you know, anyway, there's, so there's a lot of details. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's interesting really. But the other problem that they have, that all of them have, even not being in space that long, is um, the loss of tissue density quality of your tissue, so bone density, muscle mass, all of these things start to go away because you're, you're in zero G. But really, one of the, it seems to me, one of the, I mean, from reading about this, the, the, the training process and what problems they have, that the real issue is their hips. They've never figured out how to strengthen the hips. Well, my hypothesis is that this specific type of training placement the, if I was personally involved doing it, may just be at least part of that solution, if not the, the, the solution to maintain their hips, um, because there's a variety of ways that you can do it even in zero G. But that would be a really interesting experiment to run, right? Because you can simulate zero G uh, by flying in a big jet and the jet does arcs like this and you get mo some moments of zero G. So it could be tested trained in gravity and then tested. But anyway, I'm just brainstorming a little bit with the kind of things that I'm thinking about, the ways in which to apply this fundamental science of movement to other areas of life. Now, obviously, I have a real interest in using it as a therapy, like a physical therapy, particularly for senior citizens, older people, people with injuries, what have you, as a way of you know, recovering your health 
you know, your physical health and then maintaining it going forward, you know, as long as you can. So just, I've been thinking about this for years, but I'm just now saying it so that I can put it out into the world and we'll see what happens. So, um, ballet is the fundamental science of human movement and it would do good for some of the folks in the sports physiology world to learn this science, right? They have their science, which is a parallel world, and this is the science of turnout. And it's a remarkable thing. I mean, obviously, I didn't create it, you know, I, and it's difficult to even know how it came to be because the history is, goes so far back, but um, it's brilliant. It's a really brilliant understanding of the mechanics of our body, what we're capable of, what our full potential is, is really what we're talking about. So, so from just a training your body standpoint, it's really, a, a, it's, a, it's a question of, do you want to become the best possible version of yourself? That's really the only question you need to ask, and, and obviously I think most of us would say yes. And so this is the methodology by which to achieve that. And then once you're strong and coordinated, then you can decide, okay, do you want to actually learn a lot of the dance steps and dance in classes, or what do you want to do with it? But you can do anything with it, any activity. So as it turns out, ballet, the science of ballet, is a very useful cross-training tool for other activities in life, undertaking sports, what have you, but it doesn't work the other way. I know some people don't want to hear that, but this is... This is verifiable through evidence, right? We train, we see the result. They've had 30 years to try and interact with ballet and it's been just an unmitigated failure, you know, that way. So my recommendation for the sports physiology, sports therapist world, these doctors, is to learn the science of ballet. Especially if you're gonna work on ballet dancers because otherwise, no, right? Okay.